Hello world, Liu here, and today let's take a look at the Tower of Hanoi puzzle. So here this is the Tower of Hanoi puzzle, and here we have three towers. This is Tower 1, this is Tower 2, and this is Tower 3. So here the objective is to move all of the rings here from Tower 1 to Tower 3. So here are some rules. We can only move one ring at a time, and at no point can a larger ring be on top of a smaller ring. So if I try to bring this over here, it will fail. So here I have to move it in this way. So one, let's say two, like that. So here notice that every one of my moves will ensure that only smaller rings are on top of larger rings. So let's say one move here, three move here. So now I need my two to move here. So this will come here and then this will come here and then this will come here. So I probably didn't do it in the most efficient way, but you get what I mean. And if I up it to 4, now I have to do this, and I guess this, and I guess this, now I have to move stuff here, and here, so now I have to get this pink one over here, to the right, so let's move this away, and let's move this away, so here, I guess, probably not doing it in the most efficient manner, but we'll get to that in a while, so 2 will be here, and 1 will be here. And if I move it to 5, this will be a lot longer. So here, we need to try to solve this in Python. So do pause this video and take some time to give this a go before taking a look at the answer. So first things first, we need to find out how we can represent our state. So let's say we have 3 of this and we have 3 towers. So one way that we can represent our state is going to be a tuple and here I'm gonna have three strings each of these will represent our tower and this is going to be three two one so here each of this number will represent one of the rings over here so this is going to be three this is going to be two and this is going to be one and the top of our tower is going to be the rightmost number so here if we move one to tower two we carry off one and this is going to be like that so this is going to be how we are going to represent our state and next, let's find on pen and paper how we can do this. So here, let's represent our state this way. So we have 3, 2, 1, nothing, and nothing. So here, imagine that they are strings. So here, if I draw them out, it's going to be 3 towers, and this is going to be number 3, this is number, going to be number 2, and this is going to be number 1. So next, what I need to do is I need to find out all the possible states that I can get from this certain state. So this is going to be 3, 2, nothing, 1, and nothing and this is going to be 3 2 nothing and 1 because here i can only move my number one either to this spot or this spot and from here i can have 3 1 2 because i move 2 over here and here i cannot move 2 over here and over here i can have 3 2 1 or i can have 3 2 1 and nothing or I can move 1 back to 3, 2 and I get back this state so here we have to keep generating this programmatically and let's do that first so given a starting state let's define get all next states and here we are going to take in a certain state and because we want to have a list of next states let's create an out so this is a list that will contain all of our next states and from now, let's generate all our next states. In our state, we have tower 1, tower 2, and tower 3. However, notice that they are at index 0, index 1, and index 2. So let's create a list of all possible movements. So for, from underscore, to underscore, in a bunch of stuff. So we can move from 0 to 1, and then we can move from 0 to 2, 1 to 0, 1 to 2, and then we can move from 2 to 0 and 2 to 1. So here what's happening is that we will try every single move, but if the move is not valid, we simply do not add it to out. So next we have from tower is equals to state from and to tower is equals to state to. So here let's print from tower and to tower. And let's test this on our state. So get all next states and let's put in state 
and if we run this we will simply get so let's put this in a list so here this is our from tower and this is our to tower and this is our from tower and this is our to tower and so on so here notice that if our from tower is empty this will be an invalid move because there's nothing to move from our from tower so here if length of from tower is equals to zero we just continue we just ignore this and next we have our piece so piece is equals to from tower minus one so this is the last digit of our piece so here let's print piece two and let's run this so we have three two one nothing and one so this is the piece that we are moving so next we have to check our two tower so if our two tower is empty or the last digit is larger than piece so if this is the case we will add it to two tower so here if length of two tower is equals to zero or the last thing in two tower which is going to be minus one so let's convert this to an integer so if this integer is more than integer piece then we will know that this is a valid state to add so here let's say new state is equals to our current state so let's convert it to a list first new state from is equals to new state from and we index until minus one and then new state to will plus equals to piece so let's print new state so let's run this and here we have our new states however they are list now so we need to convert them back into a tuple so new state is equals to tuple new state and let's print new state and if we run this we should get the correct new states so given our original state here we can only move one to either here or here and this is the correct one however let's move one there already and let's see what happens so if i do this so here i'm gonna get this state this state and this state so let's check if they are all correct so three two if i move two over here i'm gonna get this state so three two one if i move one back to here i'm gonna get this state and if i move one two here i'm gonna get this state so this is correct so far next let's try to move two over here and let's see if our function is still correct so let's run this and here we are going to have three one two so if we move one to here we will get three one if we move one to here we will get one two and if we move two back to three we will get this state over here so far our function seems to be working well and next back to our pen and paper so this is our starting state and here we are going to branch out to all different states and one of these states is going to be nothing nothing and three two one so this is our target state and next in order to find this target state we can actually use the extra shortest path algorithm to do this so here let's get rid of all of this and let's define search so we are going to start with our state and here we start with a queue so queue will start with state and next we are going to have our dextrose dictionary so here we start with state is minimum cost is zero and previous is going to be none because this is our starting state so while there is something in q so while length of q is more than zero we will first take out something in q so current is equals to q dot pop and afterwards if need be we'll add something back into q so that we'll keep searching for the correct state but anyway our current minimum cost is going to be d current and mean cost so here i'm just going to do a return first and i'm going to print 
Karen and Karen mean cost. So here I'm going to search for a state. So this state is going to be 3 to 1 and I'm going to have two empty strings. So if I run this currently, I'm going to get 3 to 1 and here we have our current mean cost is going to be 0. And given our current state, we can find all of our next states. So here, all next states is going to be get all next states. So get all next states and we have state. And here I'm going to print all next states. And if I run this, I'm going to get all my next states. So here I've just printed it and instead of appending to out, so append and here we return out. So if I run this again, I should get a list. And here we have our next states. So after getting our next states, we can register them. So let's get rid of this. And let's get rid of this. And for neighbor, so this is a neighboring state in all next states. So next we have to somehow add it to D. So if neighbor not in D, we do something. And if neighbor is already in D, we conditionally do something. So let's take care of this first. So D neighbor, so we want to register neighbor is equals to this thing too. So state mean cost is something and pref is something. So here, pref is going to be current. And mean cost is going to be current mean cost but plus one. Because we take one move to go from current to our current state. So this is going to be plus one. And afterwards, we need to search our neighbor. So Q append neighbor. So what's happening here is that this will be added back into Q. So Q will get longer by one and we will search this again later on. And next, if we have already registered this in D, we have existing mean cost is equals to D neighbor and we have mean cost. And if current mean cost plus one is actually smaller than existing mean cost, we know that this is a shorter path to this state. And if this is the case, D neighbor is equals to this thing. So we replace the existing one. So once again, Q dot append neighbor. So here I'm going to print Q at every step and let's see what happens. So before that, I'm going to have an input so that we can see it step by step. So let's run this. And we have nothing. So there's actually some sort of bug somewhere. So here this should be current rather than state. So let's try rerunning this. So here our cube should get longer and longer and longer and so on and so on and so on and so on. Okay. So next we should return D. And if let's say our Dijkstra dictionary is like that and we print D, we should get this whole bunch of stuff. So now we can start to make sense of this messy dictionary. So here I'm going to pretty print this. So from pprint, import pprint, and I'm going to pprint D. So I'm going to print this to an out.txt text so that we can see what's happening. So out.txt text and we have this. So what's happening is that we have our target state. So what's happening is that minimum cost is seven, which means that it takes at least seven moves to get to this state. And the previous state is going to be this state. So one, nothing, and three, two. So let's search for that here. So this previous state is going to be one, two, three. So now we need to search for one, two, three, which is going to be here. So one, two, three's previous state is going to be nothing, two, one, and three. So nothing, two, one, and three is going to be here. So here the previous state is going to be three, two, one, and nothing. So instead of doing this manually, let's do this using Python. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with an end state. So my end state is going to be nothing, nothing, and three, two, one. So this is our ending state. So next, I'm going to print D, N. So if I run this, I'm going to get mean cost is 7 and previous is going to be this state over here. So what's happening is that we want to repeat this action forever until we reach the start state. 
So here we can do this using a list. So I'm going to have steps is equals to this thing and we have n. While true, our last is going to be steps 0. So the first thing in the list. And here we have the last. So let's print this first. And let's add a break below. And let's see what happens. And here we have mean cost is 7 and previous is going to be this thing. So this thing is supposed to be added into our steps. So this is going to be previous is equals to d last and we have previous. And here steps will be equals to previous plus steps. And here we print steps and we will get this. So from this state to this state. So here if previous is none, we will break. And this is because in our very first state, this is our starting state, the previous is none. So if previous is none, we know that it's our starting state and there's no need to search anymore. So if I run this, I'm going to have all my steps. So for step in steps, I'm going to print step and I'm going to have an input. So let's see what happens. So I have 3 to 1 and I move my 1 here. So this seems to be okay. And now I move my 2 here. And now I move my 1 back here. And now I move my 3 there. Now I move my 1 over here. And now my 2 over here. And finally we get 3 to 1. And we are done. So let's test this on 4 3 to 1 rather than just 3 to 1. And this will be 4 3 to 1. So now we have 4 3 to 1 here. So 1 moves to the middle, 2 moves to the right, 1 moves to the right, and 3 moves to the middle. Okay, And now 1 moves to the left, and 2 moves on top of 3, and 1 moves on top of the middle one. Now 4 moves there, so 1 moves there, and 2 moves here, and 1 moves back on the 2. 3 moves on to 4, and now we can slowly make our way to our final tower. So 1 moves here, 2 moves there, and now we have 4, 3, 2, 1. And this is the end of our function. So here with this, we have managed to solve the tower of Hanoi. So once again, thanks for watching, and hopefully this was clear and easy to understand. See you in the next one.